difficult to emphasize. At first sight, it appears that Yahweh was assuring Ezekiel that his task would be simple, since he would face no linguistic barriers. He was being sent not to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. The Hebrew for a strange speech refers to foreign or incomprehensible speech, a hard language. It literally reads heaviness of tongue, a term Moses used to describe his own deficiency. I haven't checked into that. Nor would Ezekiel find himself sent to a large number of nationalities with languages unfamiliar to him. Such a task would have multiplied the difficulty of an already difficult situation. Thus, his major challenge would not be to overcome language barriers. Ironically, had the Lord sent Ezekiel to people of a foreign language, they would have listened to him. Yahweh by Yeshem, Yahweh Shah has often displayed his power to transcend such difficulties when he wishes to communicate his messages, which you can, I mean, like in the um, book of Acts. Instead, Ezekiel was being sent to the house of Israel, his own people, which should have simplified his task. And like I said, that's how, once again, we know who really the Israelites, like I said, any brother really in the camp, they understand, you know, you go out on weekend, week out. I mean, I swear, sometimes we see the same exact people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, still, you know. You, I mean, you know how to, you know, when you out on the highways and hedges, that how they be, you know, it just, it's funny, but it's not, it's ironic, you get what I'm saying? Instead, Ezekiel was being sent to the house of Israel's own people, which should have simplified his task, but with them he would face a problem more formidable than language. The Lord, Yahweh, by Yahshem Yahweh Shah, forewarned Ezekiel that the house of Israel would not listen to him because of a deliberate hardness of heart. They would understand the words clearly, but they would reject the message. This should pose no surprise to Ezekiel. The Lord pointed out for they. Were not listening to him. Having rejected the Lord, they would certainly reject his prophet. This response had become habit, habitual for Israel. Compare their response to Isaiah in Isaiah 6, 9 to 10. And now the whole nation was impudent and hard-hearted literally of a hard forehead and a stiff heart. This is not to say that no godly Israelite were left, for Yahweh always preserved a remnant of believers. First Kings 19, verse 13 through 18, and which is going to happen again in these later days, because we're in the, the, the end times, you know what I'm saying? What do you think that elect is? The elect is the remnant that's going to be preserved. But it means that every aspect of Israel's society had become corrupt. The monarchy, the priesthood, the courts, the prophets, and the local governments. They invoked the Lord's name along with other deities when it was convenient, but they refused to obey him. Yahweh Shai would face a similar situation when he carried out his ministry. He condemned the Galilean cities that had heard his words and seen his miracles, but they rejected him. Foreign, foreign cities such as Tyr and Sidon and even Sodom, Yahweh Shai said, would fare better in the day of judgment than Corazim, Bethsaida, and Cap Capernaum. He declared that the pagans would have repented at his preaching, while the smug and hardened Jews would not. Matthew 11, 20 to 24. It was not lack of understanding, but hardness of will that doomed them. And that's all prophecy. A divine assurance. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder, as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not; neither be dismayed at their looks. Thou, though they be a rebellious house. Verse ten. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thy heart and hear with thine ears. And go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So basically, that's like the, I mean, you know, the commission that we're doing now. At the end, that we're, 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 we're um, and that's the spirit because I just was listening to um, the, the Apostle Tahar's video about we supposed to preach. At the end of the day, we supposed to be preaching. You know, we supposed to be waking up Israel to who they are. And condemning the nations, you know what I mean, and prophesying because when, like, I say prophesying is basically just to tell beforehand, you know what I'm saying. So you know, courage, promise, Ezekiel three eight and nine. 
The Lord did not promise to soften Israel's obstinate hearts. They were instead facing judgment. But he declared to Ezekiel, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. The Hebrew word for strong found twice in this verse, and once in verse 9, as harder means hard or powerful. It's often a depiction of Yahweh's power, but when used of the face, forehead, or heart, it signifies stubbornness. I haven't checked into that, but I'm going to land back off of something um, that was spoken in here um, as far as how he made him stronger. When you read the book of Ezekiel, you know, Ezekiel was basically like Yahweh told Ezekiel to do multiple things. Like he was to lay down on one side of his body, and then he was to lay down for a certain amount of time on the other side. Or how he took his um, Ezekiel's wife, which had to be a hell of a thing. You know what I mean? He took his wife from him and told him he was going to take his wife. And then he said, and I don't want you to mourn. Because basically he was prophesying. Like how, how, how Isaiah walked around naked, you know what I mean, for those three years. I believe it was three years. The lucky if I'm wrong, but I... Pretty sure it was like three, three. It was either three or three and a half. But anyhow, but that was for a purpose, you know. The Howl by the Shimmy Howl Shadows always does things. It may. That's why, like, and what's that? Isaiah 55. What's that verse eight where it talks about my ways are not your ways? You know what I mean? Like, we tend to. Some people I have tend to not even intentionally though. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why he ain't jacked me all the way up yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like sometimes we tend to. I mean, if you really a servant, like Paul really was a servant when you really read the accounts of it. That's why I love that scripture. I think it's in Second Corinthians where he talks about how, you know, um, people be boasting. He said, boasting, well, if we going to boast then he said, I'm going to boast. He said, I, I, you know, I took so many lashes. I was shipwrecked. I was beaten. I was, you know what I mean? But not for his sake, for the most high, your how about your how shy sake. So, when, like I say, my whole point, I don't want to go off the um, subject. He, you know, made him strong. Just imagine how cold-hearted and strong, you know, Ezekiel had to lose his wife. You know what I mean? Ezekiel, the most high, best belief, like he prepares you for anything he's about to set you to do. I can testify to that, you know what I mean? And his brothers know what I'm talking about. They understand it too. Anything that he wants you to do, he's preparing you for it. It's like Karate Kid type shit. He <laughs> you know what I mean? Real talk. So at the end of the day, he, um... I can see, you know what I'm saying, because you got to remember, he went, uh, you know I mean, like like how uh, 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 the apostles have said, he wasn't going to um, soften their hearts. He was just going to make him just as, you know, hard-headed, well, not hard-headed, but, you know, able to deal with it, you know. So he built him up, you know what I mean, to be able to deal with that. This Hebrew root also forms a part of Ezekiel's name, which means Yahweh strengthens or Yahweh hardens. I'm not, I never checked into that, so that's something for you brothers to check out. Thus, whenever he thought about his own name, he would be reminded of Yahweh's promise. This book reveals that he was able to live up to his name. However, obstinate his opponents were, Ezekiel was able to preserve without being, to, being worn down. This is not due to his own determination. The strength of Yahweh alone sustained him. The promise of this strength is reiterated. As an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Ezekiel 3 and 9. The Hebrew word translated adamant signifies the hardest stone imaginable. Today we might think of it as corrodium, emery, or even diamond. It is harder even than flint. The material used in ancient times to make tools and weapons sharp, such as chisels, knives, and arrowheads. To have a forehead as hard as this signified having a defiant, unshakable determination that could withstand any opposition and overcome any hardship. Ezekiel would have his share of both, and this assurance was essential. It is assurance that how it extends to us as well as represents a Mashiach in a hostile world. While stubbornness in itself is no virtue, conviction, conviction based on truth pleases Yahweh by Yashem Yahweh Shah. The Lord encouraged Ezekiel by telling him, Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house, looks literally reads faces, which is Ezekiel 3 and 9. The face reveals what it is, the inner person, and the fine looks of the Israelites could have been intimidated to Ezekiel. But with Yahweh, Yahweh's protection over him, he needed not be terrified. This was in spite of the fact that his hearers were rebellious people. Description you is used of Judah's 12th Salakia. 
The description is used of Judah 12 times in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 2, 5 and 6, chapter 3, 26 and 27, chapter 17, 12, and chapter 24, verse 3. They had deliberately disobeyed the commands of Yahweh, manifesting their defiance in words, deeds, and attitudes. Faithfulness required. Ezekiel 3, 10 and 11. Yahweh by Yashim Yahweh Shah's promise of protection was accompanied by a requirement. All my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thy heart and hear with thine ears. There was no protection for a strained prophet who spoke his own message and misrepresented it as a word of Yahweh. And it makes me think of that story. I think it's in either First Kings or it can't be in First Kings. It may be in First Kings. Or it's either First Kings or Second Kings where it talks about the prophet. He they didn't give him they didn't speak his name, but he was told to go um, prophesy and then don't go back the same way he went. And then it was another prophet sent, and you know basically he told he was told not to eat, you know, uh, anything. And the prophet basically. Uh, got him to eat something but that was all for prophecy's sake either way because i know um where he was buried at something happened later on i think i want to say it was with josiah it was with somebody though i can't i might be going off but i don't think so like i said it was an unnamed prophet and then the prophet that got him to basically break um yahweh's command was basically told I think his son to bury him in the same grave as the prophet that he had misled. But at the same time, that was all the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Because um, it says in scripture that the deceived and the deceiver are his. I believe that's in the book of Job. Um, uh, back to the lesson who spoke his own message, prophet. Uh, and misrepresented as the word of Yahweh, which you could read that in um, Jeremiah. Remember, he had all them false prophets he was dealing with. Indeed, such a man was under Yahweh's condemnation. De Deuteronomy 13 and 5, 18 and 20, Ezekiel 13, verse 1 through 16. The message Ezekiel was to deliver would be unpleasant, and the reaction to it would be negative. But it must not be compromised. The Lord n never countenances con 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 the contamination of his word. Contenesis, the con contamination of his word. We are never free to choose from it. Salakia, where we like and discard the rest. A fearful punishment awaits those who deliberately distort his truth regarding sin, salvation, and judgment. And that was deep because, like I said, when you read the book of James, it say, um, if you break one, it's like you broke them all. So that's, you know, just edification. It's like the, the Lord never, no, Salakia, I read that. A fearful punishment awaits those who deliberately distort the truth regarding sin, salvation, and judgment. The Lord commanded Ezekiel to take into his heart all the words he spoke to him. And listen to them carefully. That order may seem backward, but the thought is this. The preparation of heart is essential to the reception of the message by the ears. This corresponds to the symbolism of eating the scroll. Yahweh's word must be made of a, made a part of one's inner being. And I guess that's the spirit and that's the message of this whole lesson. You got to really be trying to live this thing, and it's got to be in your heart. You got to really become a new creature because this is, like I said, a difficult, you know, what's that in Matthew? This great gate, you know, a path of difficulty. This is a, a heck of a walk, but this is the way, you know what I mean? Armed with Yahweh's message, Ezekiel was to take it to those of his countrymen who were living in captivity. Since Jerusalem had not yet fallen, many of Ezekiel's prophecies would deal with catastrophes yet to befall Judah. This more hopeful prediction also would come to pass, but Judah would have to wait until Yahweh's judgment had run its course. The book of Ezekiel is filled with remarkable prophecies, but they could be given only because Yahweh had a faithful watchman. Ezekiel 33, 7 and 9. Let us also commit ourselves to be faithful witnesses in our day. And um, the guy that wrote that was Robert E. Wigger. Wiggers. <laughs> it sounds like, you know how they like to say Wiggers. It's W N E W E N G E R. Ezekiel was a dynamic and dramatic prophet. 